What's up guys? Welcome back to another video from Texas Young Guns. If I go missing after this video, know that Lana has found out that I have bought this and has murdered me. Come find me. This is one of the famous Predator generators, the 2000 watt series um, that you often find on YouTube because Harbor Freight makes these, or at least sells them, um, and they have fantastic reviews. Now you'll see that most of the reviews are on the 3500 watt series. Um, this is more of the, what I'll call the briefcase model, the 2000 watt series. Um, this is supposed to compete with the Honda models, the, I think theirs are, 2200 or whatever they are, uh, but the Hondas are of course a thousand plus. Um, this guy right here, of course, you can find on coupon almost endlessly um, for 449. Um, not to mention once or twice a year they'll have a 20% off a of coupon. And Harbor Freight just opened up a credit card program, um, and if you use this as your first purchase on that program, you get an additional 10 or 15% off. So you can really knock off some dollars off of this thing. Um, and these have great reviews, like I said, from what I've seen. So I am excited to unbox this thing with you guys. Um, test it out, see how quiet it actually is. Does it match up to the Hondas? Well, let's unbox this thing, see what all we get, get it running, and let's find out. A couple of items about this generator. It is a 2000 watt model, like I mentioned. So if you are like us in our RVers, do not expect to be able to run your ACs with this. Um, if you have a small enough AC, maybe, uh, but the whole point of this smaller 2000 watt generator um, is that it is an inverter generator, which means that it produces clean sine wave energy, so you can run sensitive electronics such as laptops, um, charge cell phones, as well as run non-sensitive items like battery chargers and those kind of things. Um, in a campsite that has no power, or maybe you're off the grid um, and you don't necessarily want to use a generator to run your ACs, but you do want to recharge or power electronics or do something outside. Um, that's what you would use this for. Um, and it is supposed to be crazy efficient. Um, so you're going to get two 120 volt plugs, um, as well as a DC port um, that you can plug in battery chargers and those kind of things. Um, something else to keep in mind is if you happen to have two of these, uh, you can parallel them. Um, I think they're around 50 bucks. Uh, now these generators advertise that they max out at 65 decibels. Yeah, so it is also a recoil starter. Um, in other words, a pull start. Um, there's no battery operated on switch on this thing. You're going to be starting it. Um, they advertise on this guy that if it's a very light load, in other words, 25%, that it can run for 12 hours. All right, so now to the good part. Here is the generator out of the box. Um, as you can see, you get the generator itself, which we'll look at closely here in a second. Um, looks like they give you a toolkit, which is unlike Harbor Freight. Um, so let's see what's in the toolkit. It looks like you get um, a wrench, I have no idea what this is. I guess we'll have to read on it and figure that out. Um, this looks like to be for your spark plug and stuff and a Phillips head screw. So, wow. I mean, they are cheap tools, but it was nice of them to give that to us. Um, something else they gave us is, remember I mentioned there is a DC plug on this. Um, so they give you the DC to alligator clips for charging batteries and such. So that's pretty cool. And then lastly, they give you uh, the operations manual. Um, this will help you start it for the first time or um, any maintenance items. They give you the fluid um, amounts and just different information on the generator, which is pretty good. Um, it also comes in a protected plastic Ziploc thingy so it doesn't get wet and doesn't ruin over time. So that's pretty nice. So looking at the front of the generator here, you can see here's your DC plug with your reset switch. Here's your two 120 volt plugs that I mentioned earlier. Um, you also have your parallel outlets in case you have two of these. I mentioned that earlier as well. 
you have a low oil light, a overload light, and a output light, which tells you when this thing is ready to output. All right, on the driver side or the right side of the generator, depending on how you look at it, is your recoil starter. So this is where your handle, this is where we'll try to start it later on, um, as well as a good set of stickers on how to operate the machine, which is really nice. So if you lose the manual um, or haven't ran it in a while and you forget what to do, um, here's the instructions on how to run it. Here's your other side. Um, so this is the driver side or left side, whatever way you look at it. Um, here's your three screws. You'll, this is your panel where you'll access stuff like oil and stuff like that. Um, it also tells you on the bottom how often to check your oil. It says to check it every eight hours. And on top of the machine, there is actually a fuel gauge that you can look down and see your fuel level. Um, as well as your fuel cap and fuel vent, which you'll want to make sure and open before you try to operate it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the tool they provided. I do have better tools than this, but for the sake of this review, we're going to use the tools that they give you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the side, and I am going to fill this up with oil. Okay, so here's the inside of the generator. This is where we're going to be filling up our... Uh, oil and what have you. So as you can see here is the oil cap. It does have a slightly um, a little bit of a lip to help you um, Not drain onto the ground and such but you know <laughs> This kind of sucks. Honestly, I'm um, just looking at it just from my mechanical knowledge um, This is gonna be hard to not get oil and everything. So um, just make sure you have a good small funnel and do it slowly um, to prevent drips. So um, I'm now going to add 13 ounces of oil and we'll come back when I'm done. One thing to note is that I have normal automotive style funnels um, and this hole is really small. So make sure that you have um, a smaller funnel to fill this with oil. If you get one of these styles, you can see on the side on the sight glass on one of these containers, um, you can see how many ounces you've put in. Um, so like I said, this thing takes 13 ounces it does come with a dipstick that you can check your level. We'll make sure that it's uh, good of oil and let's, uh, let's fill it up. Okay, so the cover's back on and it is now time to give it some gas. One nice thing I just noticed when I took off the cap um, that it does come with a strainer, which just like the nicer ones do. So that's a, that's a nice feature. So if you have any gunk in your gas can, like broken down rubber or anything similar, um, it should catch it, so I guess uh, just make sure you keep this clean while you're using it. There is a vent on top of this gas cap. Make sure it is in the on position so the gas can vent. Okay, so here we are. We are outside on my property. Um, I have not started this yet, so this is going to be its first start. Um, if I had to guess, I would say this is probably going to take at least a few pulls. The um, reason why I say that is because this engine has never seen gas. Um, in other words, it's, it's never been primed. There's no fuel in the carburetor or whatever it uses throttle body. Um, so it's going to take a few pumps just to even get that gas through the system to even allow this thing to start. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, the vent is in the on position. I'm going to now change the uh, turn dial from the off position to the start position. Um, I assume that the start position is also the choke position. Um, so once this thing has gotten started, has been running for a little bit, I will change it to the run position. And at that point, I should get a output light that lets me know that I can start hooking up stuff to it. So, What? The first start? I cannot believe that it started on the first pool. I just knew that it was going to take more than a few pools. I'm also already blown away on how quiet this is. Um, I have a open frame generator, an 8000 Honda. I um, mean, it's quite powerful, but it's loud. Um, I haven't even put this thing on eco mode yet, and it is already so quiet. It would be acceptable in normal mode before I even put it in eco mode. So with that being said, uh, let's switch it over. I'm going to restart it and then I'm going to flip the switch um, to eco mode. You probably won't be able to hear me. So just remember, I'm going to start it in normal mode and then I'm going to change it to eco mode and we should hear quite a bit of sound difference. Oh 
Oh my god, that's so quiet. Well, so far so good. I am really impressed with this generator. Um, it's super quiet. The build quality is pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, it matches really nicely to its Honda counterpart, its competitor. Um, so I feel pretty satisfied so far. I'm really excited to see how it does when you start putting loads on it. And we'll certainly do that in a future video. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.